Human Rights Commission, working together with the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, will host the Africa Regional Seminar on finding practical solutions for addressing violence and discrimination against persons based on sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. This seminar is prompted by the resolution adopted by the African Commission on Human and People's Rights entitled Protection Against Violence and Other Human Rights Violations on the Basis of Their Real or Imputed Sexual Orientation or Gender Identity. Quite a mouthful, I know. But let's uh, let, let my guests unpack it all for us. And joining us in studio is Advocate Pansy Klakula. Now, she is the chairperson of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. She's joined in studio as well by Faraz Mohammed. He is a senior researcher at the South African Human Rights Commission. Good to have both of you. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Just introducing it is quite a mouthful and uh, to get through, but, uh, but, but it, it is of utmost importance. Just talk to us a little bit about the resolution adopted by the Commission at the, the 55th Ordinary Session. I think that was held in Luanda. Yes, in, in 2014. Indeed, We yeah. had to adopt that resolution because of uh, the many complaints that we received regarding violence perpetrated against the persons on the basis of their real or imputed uh, sexual orientation, uh, gender identity and expression. And, uh, you know, the problems that uh, they encounter are quite serious. Violence, for instance, arbitrary arrest and detention, and even murder. And you'd recall that uh, in about 75 countries on the Afri African continent, sexual uh, or homosexuality is a criminal offense. Yeah. So people are arrested on the basis of their sexual orientation. When crime is committed against them, if they go to the police to go and report, uh, most of the time um, nothing happens. So we're living uh, on a continent that is very homophobic. Uh, but we must remember that uh, we have the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, which uh, protects uh, the rights of everyone. It uh, protects uh, everyone, uh, uh, equal protection against... Uh, uh, in fact, it provides that everyone has equal protection of the law. And it says that uh, everyone has the right to enjoy all the rights in the Charter without discrimination of any kind. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, 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 we take a look at a South African perspective, and I mean, South Africa, when we talk about progressive, you know, we were mm. one of the very first countries to allow uh, gay marriages, um, and, and yet, and we're very open and free about it, and yet there is still a lot of discrimination. But when you compare the likes of South Africa to a country like, for instance, Uganda, um, where they openly discriminate completely um, against homosexuality, you know, how bad is the continent? So I think, I mean, South Africa definitely has very progressive legislation in place. We were one of the first countries to include sexual orientation as a prohibited ground for discrimination in our constitution. Um, we also, um, as you said, were the fifth country in the world to legalize gay marriage. Um, having said that, I don't know if the situation on the ground in South Africa is as progressive as the laws and policies that we have in place, because yeah. we still see a significant amount of violence and discrimination perpetrated against people um, of uh, minority sexual orientations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I think that on the African continent as a whole, it's a, a topic that um, continues to cause a lot of controversy. There's there's places such as Uganda, as you've mentioned, a number of North African countries where um, their homosexuality or uh, bisexuality can still be criminalized. Um, there's places where um, harsher laws are actually being considered to, um, to make it even more difficult for people who are sexual minorities in those countries. So I think there's still a significant amount of work that needs to be done in respect of discrimination, but also in respect of violence committed against people of LGBTI orientation. I want to talk about today. Now we've got a gathering today. Um, Firstly, who is attending this gathering? I mean, do we have some of the countries that we talk about that are, well, again, I, I keep throwing Uganda, I know there are a lot more, but I think they're just the first ones that jump to mind, that are going to be there, that are open to actually discussing this? Yes, uh, we have invited uh, 
uh, representatives of government, national human rights institutions, civil society organizations. What is important also about uh, the seminar is that uh, it's uh, co-hosted uh, by uh, the Department of uh, International Relations and the Department of Justice and Correctional Services. But going back to the situation on the African continent, we have a lot of work to do mm. because even at African Union level, you know, among member states to the African Union, the issues of uh, sexual orientation are very, very controversial to the point that, uh, you know, we have to start afresh to have just a decent conversation, a conversation where we're not uh, shouting at each other. Yeah. Because at the moment we have not even reached that point. We are at a point, at least at the level of the African Union, where some people hold the view that there is no need to talk about uh, sexual orientation at all, yeah. because it is against the African uh, traditional values. I, I have have any countries snubbed this meeting and said that they are not coming? Well, people have been invited. Uh, whether they will, snub, they, will, they will actually maybe say that uh, they are not available to attend. But we see this meeting as quite significant. We at the African Commission on Human and People's Rights because we have been spearheading at least the protection of the rights of all people on the African continent, men, women, older persons, young people, disabled, yeah. and uh, people, uh, the LGBTI community as well. So at least we are pleased that this conversation is beginning. It's beginning. Mohammed, um, just to wrap it up, obviously at the gathering today, what, what, what can we expect to happen? I mean, is it, is it just a lot of dialogue? Um, where to from here? Sure. So I think the first thing is that it's an opportunity for um, activists across the continent to engage with one another, to look at the ways that they can cooperate and address this issue from a more regional perspective. I think also what will be an outcome of the conference will be a declaration at the end of the uh, seminar. So there will be an outcome document that will become part of the legacy of this conference. Um, and hopefully what will happen in future is that we will also be doing follow-ups to ensure that there's some monitoring of some of these outcomes to assess whether progress has been made in actual cases, in actual um, instances of discrimination against people All of right. sexual minorities. Good luck. Thank you for starting the dialogue and the conversation. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that agree wholeheartedly with what you're doing and, and would like to support in any way. But uh, there's also others that are on the other side of the coin that just think that, no, this is not the right time. Advocate Pansy Klakula, the chairperson of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. And then Faraz Mohammed is a senior researcher of equality at the South African Human Rights Commission. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. For Thanks for having us. All right. Uh, it's not going to be weather because I, I suddenly looked at the weather board and, and Paul had run away. So we'll get weather after the news. We're going to take a break and then we'll bring you that bulletin at seven o'clock. Stay tuned.